Well, good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. We are back with our weekly devotion. Uh, we're going to hop in to it. Uh, it is from John. We're going to go to the gospel from the Sunday. John 11, it's verses 32 through 44. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. So this was the sermon that I, or text that I preached on, on Sunday, and I felt I needed to sort of narrow it down a little bit. There's a really a lot of different things that work in this gospel text. And I tried to do a little bit of a, um, what you might call a juxtaposition. Um, when you look at this text and, and you've read this text, um, it's really one of the only resurrections in the, the story. We have resuscitations that you hear with, you know, um, Jarius' daughter and Peter's mother-in-law and the Roman official son and um, uh, a couple other people throughout the Gospels you hear about these, but this is really and truly a resurrection. You know, in the time stamp on this of uh, Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days, really clearly sets that apart. Um, for Jewish people at the time, it was understood that the soul left the body after three days. So this isn't, you know, anything other than real, true resurrection work. And it's hard when you read this not to compare it with Easter Sunday, with Jesus' own resurrection. And I think we're really meant to. Um, where it shows up in John's Gospel really sort of is the, the shifting point um, to really where Jesus sets in motion a lot of the things that happen and lead up to the Easter Sunday events, Good Friday, um, the passion of Jesus. It's really that sort of shifting moment where we move from signs that Jesus is the Messiah to here's what God's Messiah looks like. It's the one who dies for his friends, who has the great, the greatest of love to lay down his life for his friends. And we have these sort of compare and compass contrast moments throughout this text. So for instance, um, you know, where have you laid him? That's a question that is echoed both in the story of Lazarus, where, where Jesus says, where have you laid him? Mary Magdalene is going to ask that question in the Easter story of, of Jesus, where have you laid him? Where is his tomb? Um, it's really interesting, the response that Jesus gets when he says, where have you laid him? Uh, when he asked that to the crowd, to Mary and Martha about Lazarus, they get he gets back the exact same words that start off his ministry journey with his disciples. Come and see. Jesus says that to James and John, to Peter and Andrew, as they're on the shores of the Sea of Galilee when he calls them to be disciples. Come and see. Come and follow me. So Jesus is getting that same sort of language put back on him as he's talking to Mary and Martha. Um, you even get um, in the response from the crowds when Jesus is being emotional about this. This is one of those rare instances where Jesus uh, shows emotion uh, very acutely in the Gospels. Um, you have this sort of dual um, re 
response to Jesus, emotion over Lazarus, like you get when the people who are witnessing Jesus' crucifixion, you have the people who say, see how he loved him, about how much Jesus loves Lazarus, which is sort of akin to the Roman centurion who says, you know, surely this was the, the Son of God, this was God's Son, who see in Jesus, and as he's hanging on the cross, the glory of God. On the other side, you have the people who are saying to, to Jesus about Lazarus, you know, you, you cured the man born blind from birth. How, you know, how could you, who does this, not save Lazarus from death? Heal Lazarus before he dies. You have that same critique of Jesus as the same people who are at, you know, the foot of his cross going, you know, save yourself, come down from the cross. You have this real um, kind of juxtaposition of, um, you know, Lazarus uh, and, and Jesus work with raising Lazarus and the same thing of, of what Jesus experiences in his own resurrection, that real kind of duality um, foreshadowing might be a really great word to talk about this. Um, it, this is the greatest sign that Jesus performs as God's Messiah, which really reveals what he will then go and do later on in John's gospel. Uh, really interesting. Um, and I talked a lot in my sermon about, um, you know, and I think, again, where this sort of goes, where you connect up Lazarus and, and Jesus' crucifixion, the, the unbinding, where you read at the end of this, Lazarus leaves his tomb bound in burial cloths and covered in a shroud, and Jesus has to say to the people gathered there, unbind him and let him go. And it's really kind of looking at this, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. It's a real and true resurrection story, but death hasn't been conquered yet. You know, just Jesus has power over life as the word of God, the one who sits above all creation and speaks things into existence. But it's only through the cross that we are liberated from sin and death, which have plagued humankind, plagued Lazarus here as you read this have kept him bound and you get a real clear again juxtaposition in jesus own crucifixion death and resurrection where you know when they open the tomb there's no stench there's a stench here um in the king james version it actually says uh it stinketh lord um which is one of those really great bible translations but you know there's no stench when they roll away the tomb on Easter because death has been conquered. And there's burial clothes lying in the empty tomb that Jesus, who has conquered death, conquered sin, is bound no more as are we. And you get that sort of final connection, final contrast between what you've had in Lazarus and you read here about unbind him and let him go. And Jesus being unbound and conquering death and we too being unbound as well through his gift on the cross. Um, this is just one of those really interesting stories to read as people who, who have an eye towards Easter Sunday, who are people of grace and mercy and love, to really compare and contrast. Because there's other small details in here that if you sit your Bible with one story open and sit your Bible, another Bible, with the Easter story open, um, and just sort of walk through the two of them, there's a lot of similarity and a lot of contrast. And you can see the movement from one story of you know that work, that resurrection work starting with Lazarus and seeing it completed over in the Easter Holy Week events. Um, the, that there's real critical um, details and that change between the two and are really where we make our home in the empty tomb of Easter Sunday. Really great text to preach on, really fun, edifying text to just read and ponder for a while. Um, but friends, let us pray. Gracious God, there are things that bind our hands and our hearts in this world. Sin and death, our own turning in on ourselves, Turn away from you and our neighbors. But Lord, you send your Son into the world to conquer sin and death, to unbind 
that which holds us hostage keeps us captive so that we are free to be free to be your beloved children free to be followers of your son free to be servants in your name lord in a world that desperately needs our work your word and the community that we bring with us lord help us to bear your name your word your service in this world today and every day equip us with the skills to do it and give the us good courage to go out to where you are calling us calling us in your son's name in whom we pray amen Friends, take care and we'll see you on Sunday.